This isn't going to be a rant video. I'm not going to do a rant. I'm just going to have a look at Teen Vogue's latest video in a calm and collected manner. <sighs> teen Vogue thought it would be a good idea to tell teen girls the following. Hi, I'm Hannah Gabby and I'm here to tell you the binary is bullshit. By binary, they mean biological sex, male and female. So this is the premise of the video. How common are intersex people? If we look at the stats, and it's a large number, then maybe this is a conversation we need to be having. Here's what they say about the stats. Intersex people are individuals born with varying degrees of sex characteristics that don't fit the typical script of what it means to be male or female. And we're not that rare. It's 1.7% of the population that's born like this. 1.7%. Now, it's not, you know, 10%. Like one in 10 people. It sounds small, but it isn't nothing. It is a large number of people when you look in terms of the 7 billion people there are in the world. So I wonder, is there more to that stat? I spoke with evolutionary biologist Colin Wright a few weeks ago, and he gave me a little bit more insight into that statistic. 0.02% is what is the common... There's people that say that it's 1.7%. But that's taking into account a lot of conditions that by are, are no means intersex in any in, in any, in any okay. clinically relevant sense. Okay. I mean they 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 including things like Kleinfelter syndrome. Right. Where basically you have like, you know, two two Y chromosomes, like if you're XYY or if you're XXY, but those people are still like unambiguously male. Or like things like Turner syndrome where those those individuals are just they're they're female like there's no ambiguity about their sex they have usually problems with with um, fertility and things like that and mm -hmm. they're usually a pretty shortened stature and but they're still like female genitalia wise like they they're clearly female okay um so if we, you get to the 0.02 percent statistic when you when you sort of make the definition have some clinical relevance mm -hmm. uh, which corresponds to either actual like sex ambiguity like anatomical ambiguity where you look at it and you can't tell just based on genitals, mm -hmm. or there being a mismatch between your genetic sex and your your phenotypic sex, the way right. you the way you appear. Okay, and so, that's less so than one percent. Yeah, when you use those, that comes down to 0.02. 0.02 percent with anatomical ambiguity or mismatched genotypic versus phenotypic. By genotypic, we mean XY or XX chromosomes, and Phenotypic, we mean presenting as male or female with a penis or a vagina. So these could be mismatched. So that 0.02% are these categories of what we're working with here. So I think the thing we need to look at is these are the exception, not the rule. And what it looks like is being argued is we should change the rules to include and fit the exceptions. And I don't think that's the way to go to make people who fit outside of the rule feel accepted. Now, there are some concerns outlined in the video here. One thing a lot of people in the intersex community talk about are medically unnecessary surgeries that are forced upon intersex children to make them fit into these boxes uh, of male or female. I have gone through surgeries that have really stuck with me through my whole life and affected a lot of different parts of my life just so that I can fit into this box of female. I can see why those who ex have experienced such surgeries in this community that have negative lasting effects. I can see why there's concern and why a solution is being searched for in, in changing these definitions and these boxes. Like what she says to fit in a, the female box, I can see why there would be a desire to alter these boxes. And I I agree with her. I don't think that forcing surgeries on children or babies or however old these individuals are when such surgeries are performed, I don't think that is the way to go either. But rewriting the science, 
I don't think that will help. I don't think that will bring about the solution that is being searched for. Let's look at evolutionary biologist Colin Wright's definition of biological sex. And a lot of what you see in those articles too is they they portray sex as sort of like this this spectrum, or you know they'll say like the idea of two sexes is overly simplistic, but that's mm-hmm. just not the case because they're trying to imply that there's maybe more than two sexes and maybe even an infinite number of sexes, but that's just not even close to what the definition of sex is, which is based on gamete production or potential production of gametes and how your body is, is basically developed right. uh, in, in orientation towards producing a certain type of gamete. Uh, mm-hmm. And intersex people are, are not a third sex at all. There's no third type of, of gamete. There's nothing between eggs and sperm. Okay, gamete production. That is what biologists speak about when they say biological sex egg and sperm there's no in between like colin said so that is just what we're working with when we're trying to map what reality is let's keep that in mind when we are looking at this next clip Trans women are not biological men. We should never talk about any woman who is trans as a man. Not a biological man, not a natal man, not really a man. This is used to target trans women and make us out as predators, especially when it comes to bathroom bills. The reality is that a trans woman's biology is a female biology. So now we've moved in the video on to trans men and women. They set us up with intersex individuals and then transitioned over to trans individuals to show, I suppose, the fluidity of biological sex and how it doesn't truly exist. I think this is sort of them building their case. So with trans people to say that they are biologically whatever sex they identify with, it is scientifically inaccurate based on our working definition of gametes. The bathroom bills are mentioned, pointing out that this is how, I suppose, society tries to make trans women out as predators. Now, see what they did there. They're saying if you call a trans woman biologically male, it's actually nefarious. It's trying to frame them in a light that is predatory. It's not the case. That is not the case when we're trying to categorize individuals to map onto our concepts of reality and what science has brought us to understand. Yes, you can say that the terms for male and female are constructs in the sense that language is a construct. However, We're trying to just categorize to help us understand the world better. And to say that calling a trans woman biologically male is to frame them as a predator ascribes a sort of moral framework to a simple biological fact. Now that we've looked at the clips that stood out to me. Let's remember that this video is made for teen girls. It's teen vogue. Many people in the world don't necessarily agree with these things being said in the video. So the case could be made, what is the big deal? Let them put out their video supporting trans people, make them feel good. But it it is geared towards teen girls who are already confused enough Well, all teens are confused enough. And I think that this is not something that is going to help them understand themselves better. If anything, I think it adds more confusion. This video doesn't even say what we do have. It just says what we don't have. It says there's no binary. Well, well, okay, what do we have then? What are we left with? They don't even say, oh, there's many genders or there's three genders or they don't suggest anything. We don't even know what we have at the end. So if I'm a teen girl watching this, I just I don't even know what to do with that. If we look 
at this video from a generous perspective. The individuals being interviewed are just wanting to be accepted in society. I don't think we should lose this. We shouldn't just look at this video and think, I disagree and those are bad people. I don't know what Teen Vogue's intention is. Well, they're probably just trying to sell magazines. That's their intention. But the individuals being interviewed, they just want to tell their story and be accepted how they are. And I don't think rewriting science is the answer. What is the answer? Well, as always, I usually end up just saying, if you meet someone who doesn't seem to fit the typical box of male or female, don't judge them. Let them live their lives. If you are compatible, be friends. Don't avoid people like this. Have a t talk with them. Find out why they think the things they think. I, I, I think that would be a very interesting thing to be able to chat with one of these people to hear more than just these clips that have been strung together in this Teen Vogue video. This isn't the best message for teen girls. Don't change science. Those are my closing remarks. Also, I have a bit of a cold, so that's why I might sound a little congested. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.